Hey everyone, Pastor Tim here, and I want to welcome you to Community of Grace Lutheran Church Online. We're so glad to have you with us today as we celebrate the love that God has for you, the grace of Jesus Christ for you. Uh, it has been a tough week, and so I know it's good for all of us to be together and to be immersed in the promise that God is still God, that God loves us. And um, so if you're looking for something that will help reset your brain this week and your heart, uh, we're glad that you're joining us wherever you're joining us from. And if you're watching by Facebook, by the way, just a quick reminder to you, if you want to hit share, uh, other friends can watch this with you. So even though it seems like Christmas was a year ago now, we are still a little bit in the Christmas story. Not quite, but a little bit. On Wednesday, in spite of all the events that happened Wednesday, Wednesday was a significant day in the Christian calendar. It was Epiphany. And Epiphany is the celebration of that moment when the stargazers made their way from where they were to where Jesus was. Probably about a two-year journey. And uh, so we are going to go back to that day 2,000 years ago and uh, Pastor Kathleen's got a great message for us to remind us of the power that comes when we follow the star that takes us to Jesus. So that's what we're going to be focusing on uh, this weekend in our sermon. Uh, now, your worship team has been taking a couple well-deserved weeks off from all of the stuff they've been doing for Christmas. They're coming back tomorrow to start creating some new music videos for you, worship videos. So we've chosen a couple videos that we enjoy uh, from before uh, Christmas time. And so we're going to start with one of those, and then we've got a special thing coming up for the kids as well. So thanks again for joining us.
Hey kids, it's your old buddy Cap here with another episode of Superhero Amateur Theater. Today our story is The Stargazers See a Star and it stars our good friends Batman, Wonder Woman, and Superman. The story takes place 2,000 years ago in the faraway kingdom of Persia. Hey boys, do you see what I see? Wonder Woman, are you talking about that big cloud up there illuminated by the moon and the stars? I think it looks like the Joker. I think it looks like Lex Luthor. No, you guys, not the cloud, the star. Well, you're right, it does look a little bit like Chris Evans. Yeah, she's right, Chris Evans. Okay, Chris Evans, what do you mean Chris Evans? He's a Hollywood star. You know, he played Captain America in all those movies. Hey, Superman, why is it in all those movies they always use other people rather than us to play ourselves? Yeah, you're right, Batman. I've had George Reeves and Christopher Reeves and Henry Cavill. Yeah, I've had Adam West and Michael Keaton and Val Kilmer. I've had all kinds of people play me. Why don't they just use us? Guys, guys, seriously, look in the sky again. What do you see? I see it. I see it. It's a star, a star shining in the night. Wow, you're right. That is a star of wonder, Wonder Woman. That is beautiful. Well, actually, I don't think it's a star. I think it's Jupiter with Saturn going right behind it. Well, whatever it is, it's really amazing. Hey, Wonder Woman, doesn't that mean that somebody important was born and the star is telling us that? I've just had an epiphany. A what? Are, are you okay? No, no, no. I've, I've had a light bulb go off in my head. Okay, I saw it. What's the light bulb? What's the idea? I think we should follow that star and go see who it is that was born. That's a great idea. How far do you think it is? Well, don't worry. I have just sent a text to Robin on my bat phone to the bat cave. I've sent him the bat coordinates so that he can get us the bat destination. Why do you always call everything a bat? It gets so annoying. Well, you're just jealous because people have already used the word super. That's a super cool car. That's super interesting. That's a super nice looking dress. You're just jealous. Anyway, I got the information back and the bat destination is Bethlehem. Holy Travel Lodge! That's a long way to go, Batman! Well, if we're gonna go, we should get started. And I think we need to bring some gifts. I'm gonna bring some gold from the Amazon. Why don't you just have them ship it? You have Prime, don't you? Not that Amazon. How about you, Batman? I'm gonna bring some Old Spice. Old Spice? Why Old Spice? It smells a lot better than frankincense, don't you think? And what about you, Superman? I'm gonna bring drums. Drums? Yep, I'm gonna play my drums for him. I'm gonna play my best for him. So the superhero set off to Bethlehem, and it was a long, long journey. We three kings of Orient are... Batman, I'm not a king. We three superheroes of Orient are. Is that a dog behind you? It took them almost two years to get to Bethlehem. And when they arrived, Jesus was two years old. Batman gave him frankincense. Wonder Woman gave him gold. And Superman played his drums for him. And then they headed back on their trip. Now, every year on January 6th, we celebrate Epiphany. That's the day that the wise men or the stargazers went to Bethlehem to see Jesus. Would you please give a round of applause to all of our superheroes, Wonder Woman, Superman, and Batman. I'm 
Captain America, and you've been watching Superhero Amateur Theater. Well, again, thanks for being with us and joining us for our online worship service. And uh, if this is your first time watching, we're really glad to have you with us. And a little bit later, if you enjoy the service, you might head over to our Facebook page and hit like. That way you can stay up to speed with all the things that are happening here on our online campus throughout the whole week. We'll tell you more about that a little bit later in the service. Uh, I do want to bring up a slide for you that lets you know how you can get in touch with us. Uh, and uh, this phone number is 602-806-9406, 602-806-9406. If you text the word welcome and hit send, we'll follow up with you and see how we can serve you. If you text the word prayer, we'll take down your prayer request and we'll make sure that we pray with you. And if you text the word events, we'll send you a little list of some of the things that are coming up here in our church campus. And so 602-806, whatever that was, it just disappeared on me. There it is, 9406. And text those words and we make sure that we follow up with you. Now, as you know, uh, we have been through a tough week. We saw some things on Epiphany Wednesday. Uh, that we never in our wildest imaginations would have dreamt of seeing. And uh, we're still reeling from it. And uh, so this Wednesday night, this coming Wednesday night, uh, for our Bible study, which we're calling A Thinking Person's Guide to Faith, A Thinking Person's Guide to Faith, we're going to put our thinking caps on. And as Christian people, we're going to try to make some sense of it. And uh, I want to share with you a framework for how we as Christian people navigate this political world with all of its division and uh, the anger and uh, some of the conspiracies and the lies. How do we as Christians make our way through it? And so I hope you'll join us Wednesday night at 6 o'clock on our Facebook page for that. And uh, again, we'll tell you more about that again at the end of the service. So this is a time in the service when we uh, focus on generosity and we focus on our privilege, our opportunity to try to bring some grace to this world, to disrupt what's going on with God's transforming love and grace. And we do that through our giving together. Diane's going to put a slide up on the screen to share with you how you can support this mission and ministry of bringing grace to the world. You can hold up your uh, camera and your phone there and, hit the, uh, and uh, hold it up to the, the QR code, and that will bring you to a place that will help you uh, make uh, your generous gift to the church. You can text in a gift to 623-295-2484, 623-295-2484. And uh, if right now you're not prepared to do something, but you know a little later you're going to want to do that, we always uh, invite you to go to boldrecklessgrace.org slash giving, boldrecklessgrace.org slash giving, and uh, that will lead you right to the place uh, with a lot of different options to support this mission and ministry. We thank you for that. Uh, as uh, Wednesday was a powerful reminder, uh, the world needs God's grace now more than ever. And we want to be one of those places that brings that kind of grace to the world. So thank you for your support. Uh, before we have a song and then Pastor Kathleen comes on up for the message, I'd like to have a word of prayer with you uh, as we pray together for our country at this very pivotal time in our history. So join me in prayer, would you please? Gracious God, uh, we are uh, stunned still by what we saw on Wednesday, trying to get our brains around it, and as Christian people trying to process what does this mean and what does it mean to be Christians in this time? What does it mean to be Christians who are Republicans? What does it mean to be Christians who are Democrats? And uh, I pray, Heavenly Father, that first of all, for all of our elected leaders right now in this moment, that you would bring them together to make decisions that would keep our country safe and viable and stable. I pray that over these next few weeks as we make a transition to a new president, that uh, the, the process would go smoothly that all those people in both administrations would work together to make this happen. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that in the way that we respond to all of these different things, uh, on social media, with our friends, that we would be people of grace who carry out the ministry of Jesus, which is to bring reconciliation, to fix things that are broken by the power of your grace. So, Heavenly Father, we commit and commend our country to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
I keep fighting voices in my mind that say I'm not enough. Every single lie that tells me I will never measure up. Am I more than just the sum of every high and every low? Remind me once again just who I am because I need to. our Bible studies just a little bit before Christmas, some of us took a deep dive into some of the nativity stories. And one of the weeks was focused on the journey and the arrival of the Magi, or as we often call them, the wise men. Traditionally, we've tended to talk about three wise men, and that's basically because we have three gifts that are mentioned in the story in scripture. Well, today, we're going to tag along with the story of a fourth wise man, And so whether this is not the first time you're hearing this short story, or maybe you, maybe this is your very first time hearing it, we're going to hear an adaptation of a short story called The Other Wise Man by an American pastor and an author named Henry Van Dyke. So The Other Wise Man. In the days when Augustus Caesar was the ruler of many kings, including Herod, who reigned in Jerusalem, there lived among the mountains of Persia a certain man named Artaban. Artaban was one of the Magi, men who studied the stars to learn the truth about God. He had three of his friends, Caspar, Melchior, and Balthazar, had made a wonderful discovery. In ancient writings, they had found a promise that at a special time, a beautiful new star would rise in the sky, and at the rising of the star, a great king would be born. He would be the truth, sent from the one God, the Son of the Most High. Artaban believed the time was near, so he sold his house and all his possessions to buy three jewels as gifts for the new king. He had bought a sapphire as blue as the Persian night sky, a ruby as red as the first rays of sunrise, and a pearl as pure as the snow-capped mountains at twilight. Each night he spent watching the night sky until at last. Could that be it? There, in the distant horizon, at first it looked like a tiny spark, but it grew larger as it rose in the sky. First blue, then red, then at last, 
a bright, gleaming white light. Artaban exclaimed, it's the sign. The king is coming and I will go to meet him. With haste, Artaban gathered some food and provisions for the journey. He had arranged to meet Caspar, Melchior, and Balthazar at the temple in Babylon by midnight, ten days from when the star would rise. He could not be late. Artaban saddled Vazda, his fastest horse, and rode off into the night. For ten days he rode over grassy hills, through lush valleys, climbing mountains and crossing rivers, barely pausing for food or rest. On the tenth day, when Vazda nearly went with Vazda nearly exhausted, Artaban knew they were only a few hours from Babylon when something startled Vazda. Artaban dismounted to find the body of a man in the road. Artaban turned to leave when there was a groan and a tug at his robe. The man was alive. Artaban knew that without help, this man would not survive the night. But if he paused, he would surely miss his friends. Artaban looked up at the star he had been following. O oh God of truth and light, show me the way of wisdom, which only you know. And with that, Artaban knew what he must do. Hour after hour, nursed the man back to health, giving him sips of water and medicine made up of herbs he carried with him. When at last the man was strong enough, the man told him, I have nothing with which to repay you, but I will tell you this. From our prophets, we have learned that the Messiah will be born in Bethlehem, not in Jerusalem, and that is where you must seek him. And with the Hebrews' blessing, Artaban rode off, reaching Babylon at the first light of dawn. Artaban's friends were gone, but under a brick at the foot of the temple, he found a note. We have waited till past midnight and can delay no longer. We go to find the king. Follow us across the desert. Worn and exhausted, Artaban knew that Vazda could not cross the desert. Reluctantly, he sold the sapphire and with it bought a camel and provisions for the journey. Week after week, month after month, Artaban crossed the desert, always following the star, always hoping to catch up with his friends, always praying that he would find the king. Finally, he came to Bethlehem. Searching the town, he found a stone cottage with a young woman rocking her baby. Could this be the child he was looking for? No, but she fed him and talked with him. Yet there had been strangers here, and they had brought odd gifts with them to give to Joseph and Mary and their son. But just as quickly as the strangers came, they left. And then Joseph and his family left in the night. No one knows why, but rumor has it they went to Egypt. Suddenly there was an uproar in the streets, screams and shouts, swords clashing, women crying out, the soldiers, Herod's soldiers, they're killing our children. Artaban wasted no time. He motioned for the woman and her baby to hide, and then he stood in the doorway. He reached into his pocket and pulled out the ruby. When the captain of the guard approached Artaban, said simply, I am here alone, and I have this gem for any soldier who will leave me in peace. Greedily, the man snatched up the ruby and told the soldiers to march on. Artaban looked again into the night sky. O oh God of truth, forgive me for telling that which was not true to save the life of a child for once again giving to another a gift that was meant only for you. Will I ever be worthy to see the face of the king? In the morning, Artaban rode off towards Egypt. He saw the pyramids and the Nile always searching. He found many to serve, but none to worship. For 33 years, he searched until at last his body was old and tired, and he thought to return one last time to Jerusalem in hopes of finding his king. When he arrived, the city was busy preparing for Passover, but there was something more to the crowded streets with pushing and shouting. When he asked what was going on, he was told, have you not heard? Two thieves are to be crucified, and with them a man, Jesus of Nazareth. Some say he is the son of God. He's to be executed because he said that he was the king of the Jews. Artaban's heart raced. Could this be? Could this be the king he had searched for all these years? Then he felt the pearl in his pocket. Maybe, just maybe, he could offer the pearl to the enemies of the king and rescue him. Artaban turned to find him when soldiers crossed his path. They were dragging a young girl. She was dirty, her hair was tangled, her dress was torn. She called out to him, help me, kind sir. My father died owing a large sum of money. I'm being sold as a slave to pay his debt. 
save me from a life worse than death. Artaban had missed his king twice already because of helping someone in trouble. But helping this girl would be a true act of love. And wasn't that what this God was about? Artaban placed the pearl in the hand of the girl. This is your ransom, child. Then all at once the sky turned black. Thunder rolled through the streets. The soldiers ran off as the buildings began to sway back and forth. Suddenly a piece of tile from a roof fell and struck Artaban on the temple. He fell bleeding. As the girl sat holding him, she couldn't see who he was talking to, but she heard him speak out in his Persian language. When, Lord, when did I see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When did I see you naked and clothe you, or sick and in prison and visit you? I have searched for you for 33 years, and I have never seen your face. And then the girl heard the voice, gentle but strong. Whenever you served any of my children, you served me. And then, with a great peace, the other wise man found his king. The fourth man found his search to find the king had actually been fulfilled in a surprising way. In his long journey of seeking to worship the heavenly king, his life revealed what it looks like to follow Christ. As was mentioned earlier, the church marked the time of Epiphany this past week, a time where Jesus is revealed as the true light of the world to all nations. In this same week, we also witnessed evidence of hate and human brokenness in our nation that has impacted all of us, granted in perhaps different ways. We saw behavior that did not reveal worship of the one true God. We saw behavior that did not reveal Christ-like behavior. In our brokenness, it is revealed to us again and again our need for Jesus, the one true Savior that came to redeem all creation. As people of faith, as Christian people, we follow Jesus and we put our trust in him alone. We put our trust in God's saving grace. As Christian people, we are loved and claimed by God, forgiven and called the name children of God. And we are sent out into this world that God so loves and that God will not abandon. Being brought into the family of Christ also, we are blessed to not only be called children of God, but to be charged with living lives that reveal something of God to the world. And so, by the grace of God, may our lives reveal the true light of Christ. Would you please pray with me? Heavenly Father, following such a difficult week, we give you thanks for your unfailing love, revealed to us through your Son and our Savior, Jesus. As the Magi journeyed, following the light of the star, we are guided by you. We are guided by the light of your love and your grace. By your spirit, may our worship of you reveal something of you to this world. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. God is a God who always comes to us comes to us as broken people, as hurting people, maybe angry people, discouraged people. And he always comes to disrupt all of that stuff with transforming grace. And he does that through the gift of communion. On the night which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks. He broke it. He gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Eat this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink and said, This is my blood. It's been poured out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Drink this for the remembrance of me. Let's pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory.
forever and ever. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you, and for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained minister of the gospel, I declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As you take the bread or the cracker, uh, and as you eat it, this is the body of Christ given for you. And as you drink the wine or the grape juice that you have available, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you unto everlasting life. Peace be with you. Amen. Again, thanks so much for being with us for our worship service here today. Next weekend is uh, Martin Luther King Jr. weekend. And uh, it's a great time for us to rally around uh, unity and to rally around inclusion and, and to hear once again this great message that Dr. Martin Luther King brought to us about the beloved community. And so next weekend, uh, Pastor Kathleen and I invited a couple of friends of ours to join us for the sermon. And we are going to be sharing with you some words of inspiration from uh, some of our great black American leaders throughout our history, and uh, our African American leaders. And so we're excited to have you join us for that and, uh, and celebrate God's grace as they share it with us next weekend. We do have some things coming up for family and some other things. Uh, you'll notice uh, uh, every week, uh, Monday through Friday, we have prayer time available at 6 o'clock. Uh, Monday night, we'll be with you, prayer time, 6 o'clock. Tuesday night, prayer time, 6 o'clock. Wednesday night is our Bible study, a thinking person's guide to faith. And uh, again, I'm going to spend some time uh, thinking with you out loud. What does it look like to be Christians in this day and age of political uh, uh, unease and dis-ease? And I'll, I'll try to share a framework with you of how we as Christians can navigate our way through that. Thursday, there'll be some worship music uh, from Tony and Lisa. And then Friday, Faith 5 will be coming up for you. That's on our Facebook page. Uh, we've got a family time event coming up on Sunday. And uh, if you want to join Brita for that at 11 o'clock, it will, uh, you just need to send an email to her, children at boldrecklessgrace.org, children at boldrecklessgrace.org. And I know that you and your family will enjoy that time together on Sunday. And then uh, coming up, uh, we've got a woman's Bible study uh, starting up once again and devotions from Grace and Gratitude. This will be Tuesdays at 10.30 a.m. or Tuesday night at 6.30 p.m., January 12th through February 8th. And you can email Pastor Kathleen. That's Kathleen at boldrecklessgrace.org. Kathleen at boldrecklessgrace.org. Or you can go to our website, boldrecklessgrace.org. All the information is there for you, and we hope that you'll check it out. And so now as you go, may our loving Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face smile upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord always turn his face towards you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Be sure to share this service with your friends. Have a good week.